So you guys want to get into the car industry. You clicked on this video for a reason. We're going to get into it and tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's get to it. Hey guys and gals, welcome back to At The Pump. Patrick's sitting here with my buddy Brian. How's it going guys? Another week, we're back with you. Yes, sir. Um, this video, you guys are obviously looking to get into the car business in some way, shape, or form. Um, first, it's an attractive way to work and earn money, but why would you want to get into it? We'll start there. I mean, a purpose to get in is, is huge. For sure. So if you have a good purpose or a why, that normally lends you to be more successful in the long run, Absolutely. at least from what I've seen in success track record and whatnot. So some of the top reasons basically unlimited income potential in commissions. You know, if you're busting ass and you're a top sales performer at a dealership, you're probably taking home a five figure check monthly. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So that's definitely a good paying job, especially in today's, you know, economy. Um, with that, you know, you're going to a brand new car lot every day. If you work at a cool dealership that is a brand or a manufacturer that you like, or you actually enjoy, i.e. where you're going right. every day, that's a pretty badass atmosphere. I for mean, sure. for you, you're around supercars all day. You're like going to a car meet or a car show every day for work. It's kind of a good thing so. and a bad thing. It's like a it's a blessing and a curse because as car people, and that's what majority of the people that are watching this, you get into the car business for multiple reasons, but the, I think one common denominator is that you like cars. You're a car right. guy, you're a gal, right? It's part of your life. So uh, I don't know really anyone that gets into the car industry that just hates cars. That's true. Know? So it's, there has to be a common like with that. So in my world, yeah, it's perfect to go and be with the top of the top brands, but mm -hmm. it also on the other hand of it is a little bit jading for the fact that since I've been in this business and around these cars for so long, yeah, I get back in my car, all these cars that I've lusted after for a while or whatever it is. And things just don't, add up to what oh, you're true. used to. Yeah. You've got the bar set so right. high from, right. you know, driving a Rolls Royce with a client or a test drive exactly. or something. And you're like, exactly. <laughs> oh wait, what? I got to go home in this. It's <laughs> hard. It's, it's, it really is. People don't really think about that. And I didn't think about that, you know, Yeah. but that's, that's one part of it too. But yeah, there, there is something gratifying and we wanted to first tackle the why question before the how question. Yeah. Because why is important. There's a reason why you're getting or wanting to get into the car business. Yeah. Um, I think one of the whys too is, is there's this, gr this gratitude that you have when you sell a car to somebody that is, it's really cool to be able to help someone from start to finish mm -hmm. to maybe capture their dream car, their dream purchase, whatever it is. And that can be on yeah. any level that can be selling Toyotas or, or their first car. That's a really cool milestone. Someone's breaking through as well. Absolutely. I mean, buying your first car is a crazy fun experience if sure. you've been able to do that multiple times over but you know getting someone like where you're at they're specifically looking for something ultra high end and unique and rare so that is like each transaction or each sale they're driving off in something they've probably dreamed about or had a poster up on the wall since they were a teenager you know right or it's something that like their grandfather or father may have had and now they got one absolutely that's so cool so i the why is important to understand. I mean, and that's why we wanted to kind of start off with this because we first need to know why someone wants to get into the car business and then transitioning to how there's no, and I'll tell you from personal experience, both Brian and I have worked in the car business. Um, there's no definitive steps one through 10 to get into the car business. It doesn't it, happen. It's different for each person because everyone's got a different skill set they're bringing to the table. So some people, you know, may need to work in some areas that, their weaknesses are where other people might excel or that's a strength that comes natural to them. So what's unique about the car business is there's a wide range of jobs available. So it, it could be, and this is just a couple, it could be working on the manufacturer side. So working with the like an assembly itself, line or something assembly line. Yeah. And within that, I mean, God, they have marketing, they have outside sales reps, they have, there's a ton of jobs available from the manufacturer, whether it's Porsche, whether it's Audi, whether it's mini Cooper, mm -hmm. there's jobs there. There's a manufacturer side. There's the dealer side, which you and I know there's, you know, after sales, there's parts, there's marketing, there's service. There's True. so many different avenues to get into the car industry. So True. 
and, and it's all comes down to just different set of skills and what you excel at and what you want to continue to grow with. Mm -hmm. And most people that are clicking or would want to watch and tune into what we have to say is probably geared towards the auto dealership sales side. I would I, think so. I would, I yeah. would imagine. That's the more like commission-based, more lucrative kind of earn what you are going to perform under. Like sure. If you're going to sell a lot, you're going to earn a lot. If you're not going to sell a lot, you're not making a, a paycheck up over the draw or some businesses have stuff like right. that. So it's, it's, this business is so unique compared to anything else because your income is directly related to the public making a personal decision on mm -hmm. a car that they want to buy right. as, as rounded and as weird as that sounds, but that's the truth. Right. So it's a very sink or swim business and that's, 100%. that's good or bad. It just depends on the, these are the things that everyone needs to know if this is the avenue that they want to jump into. Mm -hmm. It's a sink or swim business. It's a drinking from a fire hose business. Right. Very little training, a lot of thrown to the wolves and you're on your own. Right. right. And that's a blessing and a curse. Unlimited earning potential, mm -hmm. unlimited, commi unlimited commission mm -hmm. from selling cars. But it's also, there's not someone there to hold your hand or tell you what to do through the process. You need to have those skills. Right. And whether you do or you don't, that's okay. That can be learned. But that is the mindset that if you are looking to get into this industry, this is something that you need to have. Yeah, it's extremely competitive. And at least in my experience at the dealerships I've worked at, there's somewhat of a high turnover rate on the bottom 25% of the sales staff. So it's like the top guys have a good solidified position. If you're hanging on, barely meeting sales quotas, not performing, you're going to have a sales manager or someone higher up than you not micromanaging, but checking up. Like, are you making a certain number of phone calls? Are you sending a certain number of emails? Are you getting back to all the ads and stuff like right. that? So, and, it, and what's interesting is that there, there is no direct path as we talked about. Mm -hmm. My path happened to be more of a, who do you know? Um, happened to have a friend working at our BMW dealership here in the Valley, mm -hmm. ended up getting an interview over there and moving myself into the car business that way. So nice. It was a like couple weeks of training, shadowing somebody, and then you're thrown to the floor and off you go, which is great. I prefer to learn that way. I, I just need to be thrown into the fire. I'll figure it out on my own. So, mm -hmm. but there's so many avenues. My avenue isn't right or wrong. It's just, it depends. So I, I have friends that started as a valet or like a lot attendant or something. Yeah. As yeah. a lot attendant, that would be, you know, working in the service drive, parking cars or washing mm -hmm. cars, you know, and then move up to maybe a, um, a valet for the sales department and then maybe moving into a inventory role and then moving into an assistant for a salesperson and then eventually having that opportunity to sell. So th there's so many ways that you can grow. So my suggestion is I wouldn't be picky coming into the gate. If you're truly trying to get into the car industry, jumping right into the exotic realm or really anywhere right into sales and performing doesn't happen very often. Right. It needs to be something that you, you, learn the ropes of different roles going up, take what's given to you, bust your ass, do what you can, don't become complacent, work super hard and yeah. continue to work up. And that is, I think, a great way to get into a car industry, whether it's a large corporation, whether it's a small family owned dealership, whatever it is, mm -hmm. get your foot in the door, prove yourself, and then kind of move in the direction that you want to, whether that's service, whether that's sales, whether that's a management role, whether that's, you know, after sales or parts. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too, to get your foot in the door, literally in the door is you've got to go there and first close them on the sale that they're going to hire you as a sales associate, as a lot attendant, as a valet, a receptionist, a parts manager, whatever. You've got to be confident and professional and go in there and kind of take the job, you know, you got to demand, you know, command presence and not be like, Oh, uh, do you guys have an application? You know, is there an application I could fill out right. and be super passive about it? If you continue that type of practice in on the sales floor, taking ups or phone calls, you're probably not going to have a good track record on closing people or getting sales for sure. So the first sale is selling yourself to the dealer or manufacturer to get that job. The, it's, it's all about being professional, being marketable, mm -hmm. having that confidence to jump in. And, and, and that first impression is every impression. Exactly. So that is the first sale is, 
is jumping in, whether whatever role it is. It could be a GM role. It could be a valet role. It could be a, a, a service writer role. Whatever it is, that first impression is everything. Get your foot in the door. Mm-hmm. Make an impression. Be marketable. Um, and, and don't become complacent. And just work your ass off. That's the easiest way yeah. that I can say it. You know, yeah. and, and little things too. I mean, you have a good driving record. That's huge in the automotive industry. Yeah, at least out here in Arizona, I can speak. They're really strict on DUIs and stuff. So for Speeding that reason, too. if you have, I think it's over six points on your license, depending on like major manufacturers and like big box car dealers, they might, you know, take a second look at your resume or application when they screen your driving record. And it's like, oh man, he's got five speeding tickets in the last six or seven years. Like, yeah, we don't want him test drives or moving stuff, or he's been in two accidents and has a totaled vehicle or like a repo or, you know, whatever. Not, not good. You need to, yeah, you need to be careful with that. DUI is stuff somewhat like clean. that. Yeah. You need to be clean. I mean, for insurance purposes and just overall safety, if you're taking customers on test drives, if you're behind the wheel of a car. You need to have a license. It can't be suspended. A, yes, for, yeah. yes, it can. It can't have a couple Clearly. holes punched yeah. in there for a couple of mishaps in the past. But um, in like any industry, this business is also who do you know? Very knowing true. the right people, knowing... Um, certain people that can maybe place you if it's not with their organization, it's maybe somewhere else that's looking for some help at the moment, Mm -hmm. you know, definitely, but it's the car business is very unique because there are lateral movements where you can jump from one department to another. If you, maybe you find out that, Hey, this one isn't for me there. There's a lot of jobs available. So don't expect to come in and jump right into it. And, And don't get me wrong. I mean, your regular big box retailers, Chevys, Fords, Toyotas, mm hmm. You know, you walk in there, you might get yourself a sales job. There's going to be 30 guys in sales and it is... It's a competitive, highly extremely staffed. Extremely competitive yeah. and cutthroat. So, yeah, you know, you got to sell cars to, to not only make money, but to also keep your job and, and to just do your day-to-day requirements as being a sales professional at that store. Right. So... And the other thing too is if you do get in and you get that job, like did you have a, a mentor or some like big shot at the dealership that you had shadowed in that first time? Not, not like, really. When I got my first job, I shadowed an individual that was one of the top two sales uh, associates at the BMW store that has been there for 15 years. So yeah, he, he, very successful in building a book of business that way. So I learned from a couple weeks of learning the ropes of how the car industry works and in each dealership and each brand operates differently of how they go through a sales process or how Mm -hmm. you know the um the the business is run or the organization is run so there is a little bit of a training period but it's a couple weeks and you're thrown to the wolf so just it's it's not a it's not an industry where you would expect to have someone to hold your hand and go this is where you need to sit down look deep inside yourself and say you know what i gotta bust my ass right these are the things that i gotta do do you want to talk a little bit about the hours or what a typical kind of bell to bell or yeah hours are hours weekly if you're looking for a nine to five job car business is not for you not going to be it no the car business is a lot of hours um whether it's scheduled hours or hours that you're coming in early or staying late to make a deal so it hours can range anywhere from 60 hours a week 70 hours a week i've worked those weeks before and Mm -hmm. and can almost all the time you know there's is 50 to 60 if not more. So the hours are there. Your weekends are there. It's a very um, busy business. And traditionally weekends and holidays, when most of the general public is off, that's when they have time to go to a dealership and you get more sales on those types of events. Absolutely. Um, Keep that in mind as well. Another really important topic is is knowledge. So when you're jumping into the car business, we don't expect you to know all the knowledge of all the cars and all the brands out of the gate. But that is a huge aspect to this mm-hmm. is once you do start and you're getting the ropes of everything, knowledge, 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 mm-hmm. it, and it's knowledge in two ways. It's knowledge on product, which is very important. You need to know the product because in today's world, what's available to us on the internet is everything you need to know about cars inside and out of the car that you're searching for. So there's nothing worse than a customer that comes in that knows the car more than the person that's trying to sell them that car or represent that oh, dealership. Yeah. So knowledge is very important. And how many times have you had a guy come with like printed out papers or some type of like yeah. stat sheet almost that Got, goes, oh, do you have this? Do you have that? You know? Right. 
knowledge is huge on product, not just product that you're selling, product on competitors too. Um, outside of knowledge on product, knowledge of customers of 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 communication you know exactly. communication things body language readings things like that is and mm -hmm. this is stuff that you pick up this isn't stuff you need to have right when you walk into the gate but these are things that will continue if you're trying to get a job in the car industry and you're trying to move up into that sales role these are the things that you're going to need these are the tips that we're trying to give you that you're going to need to be successful right or if you're trying to chase after those big commission milestones like there's bonus structures in most pay plans yeah. if you hit certain number of cars you get a larger commission percentage absolutely so it would be in your best interest to show up bust your ass and try to hit those high you know, sales goals, because it's going to reflect directly in your pay. Absolutely. Which is an awesome opportunity to have. The car business is unique because it is a commission based business that it's like running your own business within. Yeah, business, you're exactly right. You know, um, so that's the unique part about it. And that's the same whether you're selling high volume Toyota stuff or ultra luxury stuff that, you know, it, it's the same concept. Mm -hmm. So we're in the people business in the car business. Right. So I think there's a lot to learn from the car business. I think it is a great industry. Is it easy to get into? Depends. There's yeah. no right or wrong. There's no scenario where, you know, step one through 10 gets you into this role. Everything's different. Different jobs are available. Different stores have different needs, mm -hmm. whatever it is. So jump in. If this is what you want to do, if you want to, let's say someone, and I got a message the other day of someone saying, Pat, how do you get into the exotic car business? You don't just walk into a, a Rolls Royce store and give them your resume wearing a certain tie and hoping right. to jump in there. Will it work? I don't know. I'm, I'm sure someone has done that at some point. But the expectation needs to be there of what might be required to get to this role over here. We need to jump into this role and, and learn from the ground up and just work my butt off from point A to point B to get to my ultimate goal, which mm -hmm. is selling, whether it's exotic cars or a finance, you know, side of the business or whatever it is. Right? Exactly. Um, same from the tech point, you know, jump in as a, maybe just a service valet to maybe eventually end up in a master tech position, uh, responsible for brand X or whatever it is. Yeah, no, exactly. There's you know, tons of opportunity, but always look to learn and grow constantly. You know, you need to continue to better yourself, better yourself in that industry and just continue to learn. Cause that's going to make ultimately you better. And then also make ultimately the dealership or the individuals that you're working for and with a better organization as well. Yeah, hundred percent agree. So don't become complacent. Keep working, bust your ass. You know, and the car business is and can be lucrative and can be a phenomenal career. I love what I do. I love yeah. being in the car business. It's a lot of fun. There's ups and downs of both. Right. But it is an awesome place. It's pretty freaking cool. Yeah. You know. So. Um, that was just a, you know, a little insight into how to get into the car business. We first wanted to start with why, because that's an important question. If you just want to get in the car business because you like cars, cool. That's, that's what it's there for. That helps. Yeah. Awesome. You're going to be around cars and you're going to learn a lot of stuff there. You know, if you want to get in just to make a lot of money, great. That's cool too. That's yeah. cool too. That can Definitely happen. Definitely an option. You know, so I'm not here to judge or to, I'm not here to tell anybody why or why they can or can't get into the car business. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think we wanted to start off by saying this is why um, it may be some reasons that are benefits to us being in the car business. Or, yeah, things that we would see that might trigger you guys to go get dressed up, get a fresh haircut, clean shave and show up professional and ask for that job. Like, hey, I want to be a salesman at Wright Honda is a dealership here. And this is why. And boom, you know. Just go in and see what happens. Yeah. You might have to apply at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dealerships in your local community before you land a sales job that you want. So sure. you got to constantly be out there and be prepared when an opportunity presents itself. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and um, if you guys have any questions or, or comments or this is something I, I know I've got a couple of messages for this. That's why we wanted to bring this video out is, you know, if you have any questions for us, shoot us a DM, shoot us a comment in YouTube, whatever it is, you know, um, send me a message. I'm happy to give you the insight into, and maybe some, um, advice on how to get into the car industry or, um, answer some of your questions. So mm -hmm. we wanted to do this in this platform to try to give an overall view. Here's how to get a job in the car industry. Right. I wish I can tell you there's step one through 10. There isn't other jobs. There is not the car industry. So it's one of those things that if you guys have 
want to interact, please, by all means, comment, you know, send us a DM. Let us kind of maybe help you answer some of your questions um, if we haven't done so already. But we appreciate you guys listening on. Um, if you guys enjoy this content, please like, subscribe on YouTube. We're on YouTube. We're on all automotive uh, podcast searches, which is going to be iTunes, uh, Spotify, Google Play, Google Play, Anchor. We're available whether you just want to listen in your car or watch on your computer. So yeah. uh, that little red button right there helps us out a lot to grow and continue to do these videos. So um, we appreciate if you guys would click that and like and subscribe because we're going to continue to do this. And we have a lot of fun kind of like a small niche group of car enthusiasts, which we want to continue to grow this, right? Yeah, That's the overall definitely. goal. So if you guys liked it, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, we're having some fun making these videos and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Stay tuned for next week. Yeah, perfect. Mm-hmm.